Hey everybody, this is Zero for Zero Gunplaw Reviews. In today's episode, we're going to cover the granddaddy of all grunt suits, the Zaku 1. While technically the Zaku 2 could be classified as a granddaddy, seeing that he was shown first, but if you go by production order, it was the Zaku 1 that kickstarted all the Zakus and all the permutations thereof. The Zaku Sniper, the Doms, and all that all came from this one dude. So... I picked up the blah 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 blah. I picked up this one at our friends at Galactic Toys. So hit them up if you want to support the channel or just grab one of your own because you happen to love grunt suits. So yeah, this is episode 49 before the 50th episode. So I'm excited. I bet you all are excited. So let's just get into the review and talk about the first major grunt suit of the franchise. So, this is the Zaku one with everything that comes with it. So, it comes with a grand total of five different hands. So, the thing is, you can't shoot with the left hand. The left hand? Yeah. The left hand. Only the right hand can shoot. Both the Zaku machine gun and the bazooka. And both hands can hold the act, the heat hawk, and the shield. But... I'll get into why that's not a great thing at all. We get a commander unit antenna. So, if you want to see what that looks like, let me just give me a second. Pop the head off. I'll deal with that in a second and explain why I don't like that. So, unlike the Zagok from the last episode, you can actually, if your fingernails are long enough or you had a pair of pliers, you can actually move the mono eye back and forth to actually give. Like, Yozaku is looking at different directions. Automatically makes it better than the Zagok. <laughs> but yeah, so if you pop off this part here and replace it with the commander unit, can't tell one, bam! Now you have a commander unit, Zaku 1. No, no change whatsoever. But I think I may just leave the commander unit antenna on for the rest of the video. I don't know why. It just looks a little bit better. So, let's talk about flaws before we get into anything. Uh, much like its predecessor, the Zaku 1. Well, that predecessor, its descendant. This really can't hold on to any of the weapons too well. It does have an advantage because it actually can hold the Zaku machine gun a lot better than the Zaku 2 could. Which is kind of weird. I mean, developmentally in the show, it doesn't make sense, but for the models, I think the Zaku 2 came out first. If I'm wrong, be feel free to fact check me. I have no problems taking the L on that because I'm not entirely sure myself. So, it, so yeah, the gun fits actually pretty decently. It still wobbles, so it's still kind of loose, but not bad. The shield on the hand, yeah. Tiny square, big old circle. It's going to wiggle and barely hold on. So that's a thing. Also, the Heat Hawk, it's just, this little holder does not stay on. To be totally honest, I was actually surprised that this actually stayed on when the, the opening parts of this video. Because, you know, I was honestly going to think it's going to fall off immediately. So yeah. It is a pain and a half to hold on and hope to everything that it stays in. So I'm just going to leave it off for now. So, yeah. And the Zaku suffers from the same problem as the Zaku 2. The Heat Hawk and anything else. It just, you can slide it in, but it wiggles. It doesn't hold it in there too tightly, so that's an issue. So it doesn't really give, like, can't really give great action poses with it. I mean, if you tighten it up or thicken up the handles, then yeah, it should. But honestly, I don't know how to thicken up a piece like this so it doesn't damage the hands too much. So I would say if you know how to, great, go for it. If you don't, uh, either A, look up how to do it correctly because I am not that kind of person. But I personally am just going to eventually glue this together 
in the hip and make sure it just never pops out again. Just add a spike to this thing. Okay, articulation. This is this is how the high legs go. Paralyzed back flap again. And the front skirting isn't that much better. Let's move that out of the way. There you go. And we go. That's how high the legs can go. Oh, hold on, let me deep bend the knee. There you go. Yeah, that's how high it can rocket kick. Not well. You get decent articulation in the upper thigh. When I first built it, it wasn't moving. So that was an issue, but I guess because, you know, polycaps are amazing like that and they do somewhat degrade, it now can actually move its, you know, upper leg thigh part a lot better, which is great. The feet get decent bendage. So you can get decent poses out of the legs. And the arms, again, suffer from the, all these Zaku issues. Like, ta-da, this is the arm all the way up. I wish I was joking. This is as high the arm goes. And on the other side, since this is a different peg, you would think it'd be a little bit better. It's only by a little bit. You can literally see, this is as high as this arm goes, and this is how this one goes. they both pretty lousy when it comes to that. And if you're wondering what this, the, this part is, this is for when you have the bazooka in his hand and you can rest it right there. I put it up there because it looks more, you know, militaristic. So yeah. The articulations on the legs are pretty meh. And the arms are as bad as the regular Zaku, so... Unless you really love the Zaku, this is gonna, that, that's going to be a blaring issue. Another thing, you can put the bazooka on the rack back here, but it doesn't, if you have some, see what I mean? If you lightly even touch it, slightly, it tips. So it's kind of annoyance. But I've noticed with building several versions of the Mark II, it seems a lot more mobile suits started getting the back flap to hold the bazooka in. I don't know if it's because they got that technology from the Zaku series or whatnot in the in-universe explanation, but I just noticed it. It's just kind of weird. Not bad, just kind of weird that I just noticed it now. Alright. The head... Yeah, you're not going to get any downward-looking poses with the head. What you got is what you got. This. That's it looking all the way up. It can go left, right. Yeah, that's as far as the head moves, so yeah. It's not great for articulation wise. It comes with, I don't know why it comes with a Panzerfaust. Why does it have a shape charge freaking artillery unit? It, I don't know, that just tickles my fancy as someone who's played a lot of war, FPSs in war games. It's just kind of funny. Oh, where is that tiny green piece? There was another piece I want, oh, there it is. So, if you ever just want to remove this piece, you can just pop it off because it's not really connected back here. It's just lightly attached, so you can pop that all off. And this tiny-ass green piece here, you probably can't see it because of my hands. There it is. This little piece goes into the shoulder to plug up that hole. And I cannot explain how annoying it was to pop that out just to put this in. Because that come, this part comes in later in the instruction manual, so when you build it, it's already plugged up with the little tiny green piece here. It is a pain, even with tweezers, it's a pain to take out. So... If you're going to get the Zaku 1, warning you now. So, let's wrap up this review and summarize this tiny, tiny granddaddy go mobile suit. So, the Zaku 1. All in all, I'm not a mono eye kind of guy. There are several ones I do love, like the Sininju, who sits on my shelf constantly because I love him. The Goof Custom, loved it. The Goof Crimson, <laughs> Crimson Custom, I, you saw my review on it. You know, these are a couple of mono eyes that I truly enjoy. This one's better than the Zaku 2, but not by much. The Zagak is a little bit better, but this, you know, this janky loose ass legs aren't the greatest. So, you know, be careful with that. Posability, as you've seen, not great. 
like the articulation's not going to be good on it, but you know you can get it into mediocre poses and have it look nice. So if you're looking for a decent, you know, little guy to sit on a shelf, or if you want to build an armada of Zaku's, which is always cool, they may have the cheerleader effect when everything looks better as a group. Get it, go for it. But like I always say, buy what you like, pay, play with how you play. If you just love the Zaku's in general, be it the good models, the bad models, and anything in between, and you want it, I say go for it. Don't let anyone tell you how to pe what to buy and how to play. So, this is episode 49, like I said in the beginning. N on Wednesday, we'll be recording our 50th episode. I want to, again, thank you all for watching. You guys are amazing fans. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to support the channel. Links are down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode when we review my, one of my favorite Gundams of all time. And no, I'm not giving spoilers. Catch you in the next episode.